What is good? We're back. And we've reached the point of the season where it's rebuild season. Didn't want to get in it too early because I feel like a lot of this fantasy community pushes it way too hard. And it feels like a problem that everybody seems to be in constant rebuild mode. It's the cool thing to do because it is kind of fun, but you shouldn't be it there isn't. all the time. It's not fun. Uh, you know, we, we've shouldn't talked, be fun. We've talked about almost all these pillars and points before, uh, and but we know that not everyone listens to every show when we realize that we have a lot of new dynasty players that are in the space every year. And I think sometimes we take for granted the experience of the listener. Uh, so we wanted to start with a little preamble uh, before we talk about the specific players to target in, in your rebuild. And and we're going to be doing Patrick Mahomes. It's super easy. <laughs> we're going to be doing full on, you know, team roster rebuilds of evaluations. And we're going to do, you know, the same kind of show where we tell you who to target. But before we did all that, just wanted to kind of give you a basic rundown of of uh, some of the pillars and views of, of how I see rebuilding. Right. There's I think there's different degrees of rebuilding. You know, if you're team is awful and you need to start over or it could be just kind of a retool of sorts it doesn't always need to be just this dramatic kind of tear down you know if you take an honest look at your team a good barometer might be points for and points against and how that looks you know if you're high up in in points against and and pretty high up in in points for and and you're just you got a losing record then you know maybe it's not as as bad as it seems. You know, you, some context is always going to help you out in these situations. Uh, you know, if, if you're in that situation and everything's old and you know not looking great and and looks like all those guys might be losing their high end value and it doesn't look like hey you know in, in a year we really might be in trouble. Then maybe you do consider, but I think a lot of the times it might get you know overblown a little bit how 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 often or when you might need to rebuild. Having that same team and hitting on one or two draft picks in the next season can bring your whole thing right back around to being like, okay, I'm in good shape. You know, I'm, maybe I will see how this next season goes, and I trade some of those older guys. So, you know, I just, I, I just think that that sometimes we get a little too carried away with it. I get it. Like you don't want to be uh, sitting there and constantly finishing in sixth, right, seventh, right. eighth, right. You know, you want to, you want to be able to do something about that. You don't want to be in that constant mid kind of level there, but. I also talked about it on, I don't know if it was the last show or the show before when we were talking about moves to make of, of, you know, I have plenty of teams this year that I almost did nothing to outside of drafting some players, which weren't even high end hits uh, in this year's draft class. And those teams are six and one, five and two didn't do all that much, right? Nothing crazy. So it's just things can change. Tides can turn. And my favorite league that I have, I'm probably... I'm about to be two and six after this week. And I think that team's great. It's better than half the teams in the league easily, but I'm right. too, like I lost a bunch by a couple tenths, right? So that's a bummer, a zero in your lineup because of early injury in a game, you know, whether it's Olave a week or maybe ETN got you in a week or, you know, whoever tank Dell got you a zero, the one, you know, whatever is, you know, you just catch some bad luck and it's like, I'm not tearing that team down by any stretch of the imagination. Right. So there's just a lot of different rhyme and reason and context. I think that needs to be applied first and foremost. Would you agree, Big D? Yeah, I definitely would. I think that was a good, uh, good intro to, you know, rebuilding one-on-one. It's just, you know, whether you're a veteran or, or newer to the dynasty world, it's, it's, uh, it can be challenging, man. It can, there, there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of, um, you know, it's kind of like playing the drum set. You got to use your right hand. You got to use your left hand. You got to use your feet. Sometimes there's, there's timing that goes into it. And above all, you just got to kind of know the terminology and the base, the basis of it. And so um, I, I think you laid it out pretty well there and, and, uh, and, you know, we'll continue to go through it and, yeah. and uh, you know, the FFDs here for you, whether you've been playing fantasy and, and dynasty for 20 years or whether you've been playing for, this is your first year or you're thinking about yeah. doing it next year, whatever we, you know, we got a got, free discord that you could check yep. out and a paid discord. You can check out for, through Patreon for a $5 holler. So go check that out. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of that from here on out and want to get started too early with it. Uh, but you know, there's different degrees of rebuilding. Like I said, the Shuffling. level of trading can also be dictated of, of how your league determines draft order. 
as yeah. well, right? If you have an FFPC style where you play for the top pick, that could get a little tricky. Um, if you're guaranteed a top four pick, if you're awful, but then you know the chances of winning the one, one or one, two, if you get rid of every single piece that you have are, are probably slim. Now being in the top four is, is probably, is probably still good chances of landing, you know, pretty solid fish there. Uh, so, you know, it's not the worst. Sometimes it's just worse regular season records. Uh, the kids like max points for uh, yep. these days. So a lot of different variables on how to exactly play the rebuild uh, and, and how yeah, deep so I think just to it. hash that, that, that point out, right. Is, is, is really what you're saying is know your league, know, know your points. Obviously right. you're in the league, but sometimes stuff can get, get lost and, and change, uh, or not change, hopefully not change because commissioner shouldn't do that. But, but point is, is that if you play in a couple different leagues or maybe you started and you, you drafted and your team's not good, you know, go back to the basics and just kind of look at your league, look at how it's uh, set up, read your, if you guys have uh, bylaws or, or a constitution or whatever it is that you document in, whether it's a pen or or whatever, just go back through and kind of read through and make sure that, you know, before you do any uh, major changes to your team that you know what you're, you know, you're getting yourself into. And I know that sounds really simple, but um, I have a league that I've been in for seven years and I just realized that there's a, there's a certain point bonus for special teams, individual players. Right. And it doesn't come and doesn't come into play that often, but this last weekend it came into play and I was like, Oh, that's interesting. So now I'm taking a look at the waiver wire and seeing who, what other players are kind of, kind of could potentially right. get that point point bonus and maybe help me during the bye week. So, yeah, no, I, I that's a, that's a very good point. Big D. In a lot of cases, like I said, you don't need to trade every good player off your team. I think that yeah. might be a little bit of a misnomer of like, oh, I'm rebuilding. I got to tear it all down, right? That's you don't have myth. to do it today. Well, you don't have to take your best players. You don't have to take even the oldest ones. Like right. you don't have to do anything like today, right. even well, though that might be the title of the show, Rebuild the Day. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, if the team is just terrible and you don't have a lot of options, right, and and, and you're, you got two big time players, but the rest of the team is just so bad, then yeah, you probably need to trade those guys away. But just like uh, Jason just said there, this is where don't rush comes into play, right? You cannot rush. Do not do this overnight, right? You have to sit here and put the time in to find the best deal who is going to get the best value out of this. And you said it off the top, big D timing can play a role in this, right? It's going to be attentiveness. It's going to be attention to detail. And you're going to want to put the squeeze on here, right? Yeah. You don't want to just take offers. You want to, there has to be some back and forth. This isn't a time to get, oh, well, that, that's good enough. Like in those, situ- get the right in those value. situations, especially when it's, this team is awful and I really need to, you know, I got two great players and the rest is just, t- you got, and that, and that you should be doing that a lot in the rebuild, but especially in those situations, you have to put the time in. Or you're just going to be stuck in a rut here for, and it's going to take multiple years to figure yeah. this out. Yeah, when you when your when your team is uh, is really struggling, or, or there's been a lot of um, you know whatever, it just didn't line up the way that you thought you were going to draft. The margin for error is basically what you're saying is is a, it's a lot tighter. The the worse. Uh, the 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 crappier your team is if, if you will so um and and you just got to pay attention so you know sometimes i'm doing a deal and and i'm like ah third doesn't really matter but on a rebuild like a real true uh you know i'm gonna i'm playing for the 101 because it's worst record and wor- worst point scored or whatever like that Every third matters a lot. Of those thirds matter. Yeah, 100%. Uh, a ton. And, they're, and they're, it, I'm a champion. It doesn't, I mean, it matters. Don't get me wrong. It, it matters. It's just the weight of it doesn't matter quite as much on the team that's 1.12 at the end of the year comparison to the team that's 1.01 in your rookie draft. Right. And and we've, we've been talking about that some lately. There has to become a time where you stop being the person who squeezes and gets every drop of value out of every trade. And sometimes once you get on the other end of it, it's okay. I don't want to say that it's okay to lose the quote unquote value side in every trade, but if it's a big point differential that you can see, and maybe you're quote unquote losing the value side, once you're out of the rebuilding phase, sometimes you have to switch that mindset because your mindset for the last year or two has been so centered around I'm not getting taken for nothing. I'm the one who's getting everything added onto this thing. I'm squeezing every bit of value out of this. Yeah. So I think that's really important in kind of setting all of this up. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership, to get access to the free discord channel, 
or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Again, having a, have a consistently competitive team, it always going to come back to, for me, a lot of the time is being active almost weekly. And that doesn't mean just being trading to trade. That means chatting with your league mates. That means heat checking your guys to see where they're laying on values because that's how you're going to get the, the, you know, you said it off the top, big D, you got to know your league. And that, that can come down to as simple as having a notebook or notes or just having a good memory of saying, this guy's really reactionary. Oh, this guy loves running backs. This guy values young wide receivers. Every time a young wide receiver does something, he's basically going to put a second, an extra second round pick on that guy's value because, and, and I know those guys, we all know those guys. And if, right. if you're not a veteran and you haven't been playing long, maybe you haven't quite figured that out yet, but that's a huge part of this, right? Whether that's rebuilding or not, but rebuilding that can especially be something that, you know, you don't want to be rebuilding right off the rip when you, when you drafted. So you should have time to learn the league a little bit of, of right. who values what. And well, just to add to some of this, it's just like staying active, right? If you see but someone you put someone on the trade block you, and you like that player, you got to make an offer, mm -hmm. right? You got to make an offer to someone you see on the trade block. In reverse, I don't really like putting players on the trade block. Like I've, been, I've heard Big Co say, like you immediately devalue them when then people know that you want to trade them. And, you know, you got to just send out certain trades around. And, and if you hammer one guy, everyone knows that you don't like that guy and you just lost value on him. But you got to stay active, but you can't just trade to trade. I mean, I think I, you got to say that again. The, everyone wants to go out there. And we, we've seen it. They say all their good players in a day. And it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah, I think man? that's you a good, slow good down, way to bring that back. Stay active. Is, is, I've, seen, I've seen it before. I've seen somebody try to re, like do sell all their players in, in two days and they're rebuilding. And it's like, that's not, that is not, that's going to put you in a bad position. Yeah. That, that was way too fast. You didn't, you did not take long enough to figure out. You know, who's going to give you the best value? This is, you know, if you're selling a top guy. You have got to shop him around. Right. This like, is as people ask us straight questions in the comments all the time and uh, trying to move Justin Jefferson or trying because they got a bad team. And I'm like, what else could you get for him? Like, could you did you shop him around? Have you sent an, a literal offer to everyone with him in it and asking for the world? And you know, dude, you don't have to trade Justin Jefferson right now. Right. Like, I still know, wouldn't do the that. The value isn't want, going I'm anywhere. Rebuild around Justin Jefferson. If right. I can like well, that's that was kind of one of the points is you don't have to sell all your good players. If you are in a position where you kind of need to do that to to get all to get some value back to, to distribute players back in there, that's one thing. And, and you could but you don't have to trade Justin Jefferson today. Justin, it, there's going to become a point where somebody may say, all right, well, fuck it. I'm ready to go all in and pay for a ton for Justin Jefferson. And I got a deep team. I'll give you couple players off of here i'll give you a couple of picks and then you go okay well i don't want to sell them but at least i'm getting some good players some young players and some picks here and 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 we're hey we, we just diversified a, a good bit right and there, there is something to be said for getting points out of your lineup to further worsen your record and increase your draft pick the next depending year. on how the but league you, do, set you gotta up. do that with running backs though you know not like your best wide receivers i feel right like. but I'm, I'm not gonna that's not a, a reason for me to do it to, to make the guy got to get these guys like it's, it's going to be okay for the most part right if you, you could weaken the You're lineup not other ways, you, right yeah yeah you know, so the, i think you know just kind of recap what we just we're kind of talking about right is 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 know your league if you haven't been paying attention to your league there's ways to go back uh if you're on sleeper you can go just click on a player and go to the history tab see what they were traded for you can do that on a lot of your a lot of your teams you don't have to sell your studs just to rebuild you know there is advantages and disadvantages and we'll call that uh, dynasty rebuilding 201 when you when you get into what's the you know plus or minus for this but there there is times when you you know th it makes sense to sell or you got just a tremendous offer and a lot of people hate uh dynasty calculators especially if you've been playing for a while but i don't think that they're a bad thing to kind of get your bearings with just to kind of understand where the value is now remember you just gotta be a closet uh, user don't tell yeah about it. yeah you, you have to be i, I I'll, certainly I'll don't be like wow well, you're wrong like, I'll, straight calculator I'll, I'll, so. like if you're new to it like at least yeah. use it don't use it as the end all be all but it's yeah, it's, yeah you're yeah. not gonna i appreciate that you're not fucking the league up by letting right. somebody get get you yeah, and Dynasty Daddy has a has a great one. Uh, you know, we use them a lot on 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 some of our shows, and there's some some good ones out there. But just just point being is, you know, don't don't be afraid to to you know look around, do a little research on your own. But also, if you're not sure, reach out, man. That's you know that's yeah. that's part of this great community that that we've got building here. 
we're only five dollars away or or free even um so yeah so many options yeah and, and just to another double down on the dynasty daddy thing uh we we got some stuff in the works coming with them. If you're Patreon, they're going to be a perk that we're going to be offering soon where you can incorporate rankings and stuff, but it's for it's free. You can go sign in, put your uh, you know, sleeper username in and find your team. You know, I was pulling up one of uh, one of Casey's teams as we were sitting through here just looking at uh, our the Ultimate Dynasty podcast league, but it'll it'll tell you, you know, what it thinks you are and and you can look at everybody else's players in the league and look at things and and it has this trade database that we've been going through and looking at certain trades so very very cool tool uh, a lot more to come from from uh, the dynasty daddy over there but um definitely a good free utilization that you should you know you gotta that's the one thing when you're in these leagues and you're making trades and you're new to dynasty you have to figure out a way to understand what value is you know mm-hmm. obviously value is going to get skewed because everyone's doing their own thing and they think their own thing but like and maybe not everyone's on Dynasty Twitter and doesn't have like ADP that they're looking at. It's not going to be good for you to be on Dynasty Twitter anyway, if you're, especially if you're new, because <laughs> yeah, there's just way new. too much trash in there. A lot of trash, but you got to know there, what the There's some really is. good follows. Our, our yeah. boy Austin Abbott, he's got some really good details that go out there. There, You yeah. know, there, there's there's some some other people out there that I'll, I'll listen to and pay attention to. But I, but I agree with you. And I, I think what you were also saying, Jay, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I feel like, you know, this is also your game. This is your team, right? So we're saying all these things, you know, pay attention to this, pay attention to that. But dude, if you have a feeling for somebody, go get them, man, go, go get it. If you got to pay a little bit more, you know, don't pay two, you know, I'm going to pay three first for somebody that's worth one first, you know, don't do that. That's where, that's where all the strategy stuff that we're talking about. But if you really, you know, this is a, this is one of the points that I always like to say, especially the new guys don't always ask everybody for their opinion. You know, if you, if you have a really strong feeling about a player then go after them um, and, and, and go get them and have them on your team. Cause there's nothing, there's no other feeling like that. Just be cautious on how much <laughs> you go after them is right. really what we're saying. It, right. It stinks to like not take a value jump or not, not grab a guy who you really wanted because you knew the value wasn't quite right there. But then you don't have him on your team, and that's way worse of a feeling when he's like good. That like, ah, oh, that's my guy, and I don't have him. So yeah. that is part of the uh, fun of Dynasty is sure getting your guys. But you have to know back to the point. You have to understand value. You have to know who is around worth a first round pick, who's worth around a second, who's right. in the same kind of tiers, and that's where ADP comes in so much. Uh, it's just knowing can at least give you a gauge, right? right. Everyone's yeah. values are going to be different. I like but to that go can check help. that ADP and yeah. how far off is this? Is it is it two rounds apart? Then you need to make that up somehow. And and then how much can you squeeze to make that up? And and I'm usually wanting to go up in a tier. I don't usually want to trade down. Anytime I'm getting asked questions about what this trade should go, it's like who's the best player in the deal. That's usually the side I'm leaning on because yeah. I want to go, you know, get a better player. But uh, you got to know the value, and, and we get we got ADP. Uh, we're not we're not rolling with it in the uh, in season because it's you know we're not doing startups and stuff. But we we'll, we already did one uh, startup mock draft and did a show on it. Go check that out. We'll be doing more ADP as the off season approaches, and we'll have our own. And it's just a good tool to check when you're when you're trying to make sure you got the value right here and yeah. not getting taken for something. And and then that's what you go you go find the people whose, whose values messed up, and then you yeah. you capitalize and and you might you might try to trade with someone and their value so skewed in the opposite direction and their value is just like, come on, man, you're just so way off base here. Yeah. What you can't do is be a jerk to that person. Yeah. You got to keep killing point. them with kindness and eventually their value will be skewed in your favor. And then that's when you get just a lot of, a lot of ha's and LOLs and just because sometimes, especially if it's text and yeah. things can get the lost one in ha. Trend. The ha so, changes its own. Every got it. Just H-A make the sure the tone doesn't come off as fucked up, even though yeah. it, it, you want to be such a dickhead. Because uh, there are certain people who don't want to do the, the the dance with the trade, right? They just, they're going to send you this one offer. best and final offer, yeah. and it's like, all right, well, that's cool, man. If if it's if it's a bad offer, it's a bad offer. If it's a good offer, you, you know, you might just take it right there. But I'm usually going to then go shop a little more and yeah. and at least come back. And if he's the kind of guy who won't give you the offer again, that's just a, that he's just a bad player and probably a jo. Yeah, you'll run uh, into some of those, but I, yeah, I, I agree with a lot you. Of jerk I, I, off in the face. I think one of the one of the ways to talk about this is also if we related outside of fantasy, and you kind of talk about golf, right? There's a reason why they put par X on a on a hole, you know, a par three, a par five, mm-hmm. a par four. That's your base. That's your barometer. That's that's where it's at. And so a lot of these tools, be it ADP tiers, be it you know dynasty uh, uh, dynasty calculators, be it 
um, comments from uh, other players that kind of gives you your your barometer for the the, the hole that you're playing right so mm-hmm. so if you're on a par four you want to hit around or under that par four most of the time you know if you go if you do a five uh, was that a bogey uh, I'm not a golfer so this, this is a weird <laughs> analogy for me to bring up but I think it, there's a lot of golfers and I think just Golf in general sucks. it's an easy way to kind of uh, I don't know about sucks. It's fun, but I'm just not good at it. Um, but the, the, but it's Maybe an easy way to kind of a, do the analogy, right? Is like yeah. you know we're we're sitting here and we're we're spitting a lot of great information, but there's also a lot of information if you're new. So yeah. just just kind of kind of keep that in the back of your mind. That's well, over the here. That we're, we're raising the bar so far above par. <laughs> Well, I know we didn't get our below aren't, par. Aren't terribly in the Shit. weeds on the who's and what's and how's here, but I thought it was I gave, important. I gave him some guys. I know, thought it was homes. important to establish as we were coming into this. And I, again, we've said almost every bit of information we just said here yeah. in different podcasts throughout the the year, this year even, uh, and and at different times, and and in one or two other podcasts. But I felt like it was important as we jump into kind of what we're going to call a little bit of a redraft season here to lay all that out there and and just kind of go through the basics of stuff because it does get brought to my attention sometimes that you do take for granted the you know the knowledge of everybody listening to this right and i I, I think if if you're you're, i was just going to say i think if you're you're digging this if you're liking this type of podcast you know we're trying to we're trying to you know uh hit hit a little bit of everything so please uh, leave a comment let us know, um, you know, how, how you're feeling. Um, yeah. And Jay is, if you're watching the tubes, he's flashing through some players. There's, yeah. there's a parade we, we, of players. We got to get to some up. must buys to rebuild today. Yeah. And I should have let off with, Hey, if you want to skip all this and just go to the list, <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's at the end. I'm sure he'll have a yeah. timestamp for you, but I wanted to give a couple of ideas of, of some things that I like to keep in the back of my mind when I'm searching through teams, obviously, like if I'm a shitty team, I'm going to go to the contenders and I'm, you know, you're going to try to sell all your olds, right? That's yeah. going to be, First obvious step is, hey, we're going, we're selling the older players, the Devontes. Cooper Cup just came back, right? Might be trying to unload him. Unfortunately, maybe Diggs got hurt for you. That stinks. Terry's a little on the older side. He's crushing it right now. There's a value uptick in him. Godwin, unfortunately, got hurt for you. Evans is is a little banged up, but he'll be back. Hopefully, maybe you don't have a trade line if it's Dynasty. You probably shouldn't. Uh, but just to give you a list of some of the older guys, Derek Henry is obviously crushing right now. And if he's on your, you know, Derek Henry, Alvin Kamara, James Conner, Aaron Jones, all those older guys, right? You don't have to sell them, but if you're in a position where your team stinks, you're going to the contenders and and, and you're going to kind of, you know, see, see what you can get. Cause in season, those guys are going to have the most value, right? You get out of season. Nobody gives a fuck about the old guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's really hard to sell somebody on the old guys, but when you're competing, you have a whole different view on them. Just like you said, at one yeah. point, big D, how you value that third. If you're the, if you're the one Oh one or the one twelve, you know, how you value your first, if you're the yeah. 1012 or the, you know what I mean? So yeah. that can be, uh, you know, quite a difference. And, you know, you, you might've thought coming into the season, oh, I'll never get that for, you know, Cooper cup or, you yeah. know, insert, I guess Derek Henry would be a good one since he's slaying it right yeah. now and, and, yeah. and old. Um, but, you know, and then another step, obviously after that obvious there is, is injured players is always on the rebuild, trying to get, a little bit of value off of them. And Rashi Rice would be a good one here. You know, if, if if somebody had Rashi Rice and they're still competitive right now, but they want to add one more, Hey, they want to add Devante Adams. Can I give you Devante Adams in a first and get Rashi Rice from you or Devante, you know, obviously if I'm the, if I'm the competitor, I don't really, or if I'm the, if I'm the shitty team, I don't really want to give up my first, but maybe I have some other firsts that I could deal in there. Or could I, could I give a player and a two or how can I, how can I get this done? How can I buy, a, a really high end player who's hurt, who you're not going to give the proper value to right now, like a Rashi Rice, or we just had a a Patreon episode where somebody asked about Brandon Ayuk, and it was basically two twos and a three is you know what he had a rebuilding team, and I was like, hey, try to get that three out of there, and two twos for Ayuk, it sucks to pay that right now because he what he, he soured in my mouth a little bit, but two twos is probably outstanding value for Ayuk, right yeah. for for a rebuilder. And, and Hey, look, you want to go into the draft and the draft picks aren't going to lose value, right? It's one of the only thing that's going to continue to go up. So you're, you're mostly going to be collecting as many picks as you possibly can, but it's also okay to, to collect players, right? It's also okay to grab these guys on the cheap. So Brandon Ayuk would be, you know, a, a good example of an injured player right now. And obviously Nico Collins is on the way back. So, you, you know, you, you maybe don't necessarily want to trade for, you're not going to get a whole lot of, of, you know, 
action yeah. deal on on Nico, but you kind of get to my drift there. But th- those are those are some good ideas for some injured players. Then then maybe we move to to youths that aren't crushing, right? right. If somebody sees Roma Dunze and they're upset that Brian Thomas is doing what Brian Thomas is doing and they want to sell. I'm not saying sell Brian Thomas. I'm just saying like they're upset because they see what these other guys in that class were doing and they're not getting it from Roma Dunze and they want it now. You know, they want their golden goose now, daddy. Go ahead and, and try to pounce on on the Roma Dunze, right? You you go figure out how to how to get that deal done. That this is this is a guy who, if you watch the tape, he is open. He's getting open. Mm-hmm. They just have a young quarterback and two very good veteran wide receivers out there. So youths who aren't crushing. And you can go down to guys, even even we can pair the two together, right? You can go uh Marshawn Lloyd. Yep. For for Lloyd's Yep. On IR and and you know in a good position that guys who use two backs, but you know maybe somebody's sick of him. Maybe you can grab him for cheap, right? Ricky Pearsall hadn't been playing; he got shot. Maybe somebody want you know. Obviously, he's playing now. Um, Xavier yeah. Leggett hasn't taken off, but shown flashes. Maybe people right. are like, "Oh, the Panthers stink so much." I you know I, I don't want him. Um, Miami's been struggling with Waddle. Waddle's a good one that I, I like to look at because right, his, his that, value goes way well, down. And, still yeah. still young enough there to, to qualify in there, but Waddle is certainly on the list right there. I'm trying to think of some uh, of a couple more rookies there that maybe aren't, you know, Jalen Wright. Troy, you know, Troy Franklin would be an example of like a, a dude who you might be able to get in as a throw in right now. Then he yeah. could be what I like to call an escalator, a guy who can go up in value. He's been with Bo Nix before. He's got right. a lot of speed. He might just need to learn how to play a little bit. And Sean Payton's playing little Jordan Humphreys. What are you going to do? Right. Um, Troy Franklin will be a throw in a piece, but a guy that, hey, oh, yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me try to get, let me, let me try to suck Troy Franklin uh, off this guy's team for next to no value on him because he doesn't care. He wants, he wants this guy who's performing right now. And Troy Franklin ain't doing shit for him. Up, up until uh, last week, uh, our boy Tillman. Tillman. Yeah. Was Cedric another. Tillman was, was, mm-hmm. was a great one. You know, Tank Bigsby was one last year. Josh Downs was one last year. Yep. Even somebody Still like now. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's doing pretty good. Well, now and, Flacco's uh, gonna the cat might be right out of the bag with Downs there. Oh, they're still <laughs> mad at Anthony Richardson. If he gets another start, then. But yeah, right. Um, but I mean, down still had four for a hundred and a touch or something this week. Mm. Uh, so just just guys along those lines, young, even somebody like a Darius Slayton. We saw Slayton come in and sometimes and have some have a good have a good player. You know, this is he's not he's not super young, but we saw him this year come in, get a good role and perform. We've seen him in the past have Pop, decent, you. decent stuff. Nobody gives a shit about Darius Slayton. He's a guy he's yeah. he's a guy you throw in there as a throw and you could squeeze somebody for Slayton and he could go somewhere. He could be traded tomorrow. He could be on Pittsburgh tomorrow. What if Darius Slayton's on Pittsburgh tomorrow? Right. You know what I mean? Before this trade, he just stays happened. in Pittsburgh after this after the Monday <laughs> right. game. He just doesn't just even leave. They were know? playing e- each other. <laughs> um, you know, so you know, and then like when I'm talking about these escalators, like Slayton could be an escalator. Kendra Miller is a guy who hasn't taken off yet, who I believe in the talent of. Right? Tank yep. Bigsby was this one of those guys last year that I was trying to get thrown into deals. Right? Um, you know, uh, Ke- Keaton Mitchell. You know, he he's a, he's kind of that guy. I'm trying just guys I can get for free that can be escalators that can go up in value so quick. And we've seen maybe some sh- glimpses of uh, little bits of things from them are all yeah. sorts of my little tips and tricks of just I'm, I'm trying to squeeze every little bit and massage every little bit I can out of here. And then then we go to guys maybe who are underperforming, but we know are good. And, and the public is just down on Waddle. You mentioned him, right? Yeah. Waddle's not performing well. You know, people are worried about two. Uh, I know Waddle's a fucking good player. He just needs a quarterback who could throw it to him. If you're going to give me a good deal on Waddle, I caught a good deal on Waddle before the season even started. Has it worked out right now? No, not necessarily, but it was still a damn good deal. And I'm yep. going to take it 100 times out of 100. Jalen Waddle's going to be just fine. You know, we, yeah. we, we know it. T. Higgins, right? Injured right now. He's going to go somewhere else. Somebody's probably pretty frustrated with T. Higgins right now. Yeah. You, didn't, you, you, you know, you were unsure all off season. Then he then he misses some games. Now he's hurt again. Rebuilding team, perfect pick for 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 my guy T Higgins here. Et, we mentioned him in in an episode before, right? right. Value so down on it, Travis Etn right now. You know, this is a buy, scoop him up, buy him low. You know, great. I know Travis Etn. <laughs> this is RB three last year, guys. Yeah, like. This isn't uh, there is he's in void of talent. This is a very good player. Just a weird situation he's in right now. I'm going to bank on that banged kind of up. stuff. Right? Banged up and and the Jags are just, you know, 
We got a guy who wins when he wears a hat and then loses when he wears a visor and he just continues to wear a visor. I don't understand it. But Travis Etienne screaming top of a buy list, especially for rebuilders right now. You know, he's 25 and he's running back and somebody might say, hey, no, you can't do that. I disagree. You can buy every player you have. You buy doesn't need to be 21 or younger, right? If you can catch a good deal on a Waddle or or an ET who's 25, I'm fine with it. Chris Olave up until this last year, last week, you know, obviously got a bunch of targets and and was really, really good and showed you, oh my, yeah, Chris Olave might actually be good at football. Imagine that. We've we've never seen him be good at football before. It's weird. Actually, we have. I'm just kidding. It's been more than three weeks. (laughs) Right. The amount of people who were like, oh, he's a bust. I'm out on Chris Olave. That tells me what a fucking buy. And we've we've been saying it for a while. So nonstop on the Olave um, and the JSNs. Those are the kind of guys as far as throw ins and and guys, things that you can squeeze uh, veterans who we know are good, who are underperforming injured guys, young guys who are maybe underperforming and haven't crushed yet. And people want to, you know, just be out on so fast. So. Right. All of those things are 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 kind of those are my first stops on the rebuilding tour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that was that was great. That ASN. Was, uh, I thought you were going to drop that mic right off the right off the stand there. That was a mic drop type of type of thing. Yeah, JSN. I mean, uh, Kyle Pitts was probably one that was on my list. He's he's starting to starting to produce, but you see he's eating up what what he does with the quarterback. And you know, Michael Penix hasn't played yet. He's another one of those young young dudes on a rebuilder that you might be able to somebody drafted him with the idea of, of 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 Michael Penix and him beating out cousins or some weird stuff but we know that he's kind of there for the long haul so you know that's what Jordan Love did uh, Jordan Love's one of the best quarterbacks in the uh, unfortunately he had a groin issue but uh, but he's been playing you know he's been he's been lighting it up there in Green Bay um, but he sat on the bench for multiple years mm. and uh, and you know people kind of forgot about him or he didn't have the pedigree that Penix has so you know, Penix is another one that I kind of, and not just because he's Washington, not just because he's part of my dogs, because he, you know, I'm, I've, I've been high. He is a dog Penix and a general. dog. He is a dog and a dog, exactly. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think you know, and then we'll we could end it with what Patrick uh, Mahomes. Yeah, we can end it with what you hit, hit on hit on the beginning of it is you know, <laughs> we've gotten so, so a lot of stuff about Patrick Mahomes. Everybody's concerned about Patrick Mahomes. Their stats of has it been QB one? Hasn't scored twenty points. I don't it's care. Twenty one. It oh doesn't fucking matter to me. Look, Lamar Jackson last year. Everybody was like, "Is Lamar? What's wrong with Lamar?" There was such a buy window on Lamar Jackson, and now he's slaying. They yeah. tried to fix what Patrick Mahomes' problem is. It ain't Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is the best fucking quarterback in the league. Right. You know the defense is awesome. Hollywood Brown hadn't played a snap for him. Rashi Rice got hurt. They drafted Xavier Worthy to be a guy who they can bring along, stretch the field with. And you've seen him do great stuff with Xavier Worthy, but they were hoping to have this other cast of characters around him for him to be a complimentary piece right now. Now they made a move to bring in Nuke Hopkins. Like, they're trying. They they want to get Pat back on a roll here, yeah. and they're still fucking undefeated, man. Like, Patrick There's a Mahomes. Buy window for Patrick. It's Go great. There's a you, know, you don't get a buy window like Joe or um, yeah, Joe Burrow was was oh, down Burrow. last yep. season. Look, Joe Burrow's fucking awesome at football. Well, uh, Josh yeah. Allen even to start this season started a little slow, and yep. and you know there was probably so. Stroud uh, is not doing what people want him to do. He right. You can get him like you got to go pounce on these players when this value presents itself because a lot of times they were so good at one point you could never get them off of that person. Unobtainable, team, you know. And then yeah. some recency bias, a stretch of three bad games. You all of a sudden you don't throw a touchdown pass in the month of October. You're the fucking worst. Yeah. Time to sell. He must be. A, he's he's, he's like, washed. God damn. Just he's settle washed. the fuck down. Everyone drives me such so nuts. Yeah. Going the so, XFL. Ugh. So many trade Hakeem questions. Butler. Oh, wait, no, no, Hakeem Butler. Oh, wait. And that. Marvin Harrison Jr. was oh. a huge buy for us like all season long because people are just so mad he's not Malik Neighbors. Like, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And Kyler throws for 300, and all your questions are answered. Well, Bo, Marvin Harrison can play receiver, Bo. He's playing an outside yeah. X receiver, and he gets open. And look, they threw it to him. Kyler had, had a good game. And he, he smashed and, and Miami was a good quote unquote pass defense coming into there. Uh, and, and, you know, Kyler had a good game and Marv looked like the guy that everybody thought he is. And that's not like he hadn't even shown us that. It's, it's he like, did. it's crazy. Like he showed you that he was good. They didn't throw it to him week one, then, then a stretch of good games, then a concussion and, and a five. And then like, 
Marv's bunch of bust, overrated. So uh, we're getting on our soapbox here to end this. Why we don't like Dynasty Twitter. Uh, But you know, that's you know, hey, if you're in, if you were in the rebuild anytime soon, and and people want to, you know, that that, that's really the the essence of the game when when people are frustrated and the player is good and and the value goes down a little bit, you buy the dip, and uh, you know that goes for rebuilding as well. So that's probably a good way to end this. Big D, you got anything else for us? No, I mean, I, I think we covered pretty much everything. The, the only other thing I would say is just uh, if you're still listening, you know, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We, you know, it, it helps us and we appreciate it. Uh, give us some comments. Um, the last little tidbit since you waited to the end. One thing that I'll say is also you can kind of use like Dynasty Daddy, some of those other tools and just just see if um, there's a team in like seventh place or sixth place and you think their roster is not going to be that great or you're using some tools to kind of calculate, see if you can get their first from them. Um, that yeah. that also helps you rebuild is it's not always about your team. It's about the teams around you as well. And seeing if you can project the future on them before they even know the future's there. So Love that's, it, your, that's your, that's your end of the pod little tidbit for those who, uh, who hung in. Love it. Love it. All right. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five star review if you haven't. If you like, what are we doing? Just click the five star review button, guys. We need them. We love them. It really helps us out. You, you, you know, if you're, if you're, if you don't want to uh, be a five dollar holler or, or join the free Discord or buy a t shirt to support the team, you can at least support the team by hitting us with the five star review. Got uh, to. So please help us out in that way and uh, be sure to keep it locked and loaded here for all your dynasty coverage. We'll be doing plenty of, uh, rebuilding and and keeping you know got to keep the contender game strong as well so we'll be going all the different ways you know uh, small dogs and medium-sized dogs also have to eat so <laughs> yep. that is true that is true all right until next time we'll catch you uh on the flip off the schneid for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> peace <laughs> Later.